Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today. Thursday, October 25th, 2012. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. The links will be posted in YouTube's video description and if you'd like to find part two and part three videos you can find all of that on my channel and my website. Alright, so we left off with Lebanon. Uh, I don't know what it is, uh, but when I cover Lebanon and I, I mention anything about it falling or, you know, like yesterday I titled it The Next Domino to Fall, Lebanon. And it's not that I want it to happen because I, I get comments every once in a while be like, oh, Lebanon will never fall. You don't know anything about Lebanon. Lebanon is strong. They will never be divided. And, you know, I hope that they don't, you know. It's just that I saw what happened in Libya and I see it now, you know. Uh, I actually thought that, that they stood a chance there, and um, and then I see what happened, and I'm just like, well, they're part of that uh, of that list of all the countries that are supposed to go down in order, according to Wesley Clark. And so I'm going to stick to that. I mean, I hope that they don't, but uh, we'll see, I guess, right? So we're talking about the sh uh, shelling that uh, from that fell from Syria inside North Lebanon. No one was really hurt. Um, but we're talking about what? Syrian forces repelling these insurgents and terrorists on the Lebanese border. So it's spilling over to the Lebanese border. And um, it says the remaining gunmen fled back into Lebanon to save their lives. Building off what we just talked about in the first video, the Syrian government says the chaos is being orchestrated from outside the country and that there are reports that a very large number of armed militants are foreign nationals. Then I came across this article right here um, because I saw another comment about Lebanon. And uh, they were basically saying, well, you know, why don't they, uh, you know, why don't they just wait till the elections for uh, Lebanon, you know, if they really want to. Because, I mean, what we're talking, what I'm referring to is just recently the United States just asked Lebanon to form a new government. And someone said, well, why would they do that if they're having elections um, very soon? They're coming up. So why would they want to just form a government right, right, you know, right away? Then I saw this article from today, Lebanese president seeks talks on government future it has launched a drive for all party talks to assess his chances of forming a new government after calls for the premier to quit over a deadly bombing which was um it's pointing towards the zionists and israel in the west doing it to create instability in lebanon uh, to further escalate the regime change in syria and, of course, to try to weaken Hezbollah, i.e. Iran. So it's just kind of interesting because they say Lebanon has been in crisis since Friday. So engineered crisis. Uh, U.S. offered the solution, which was to form, your, form a new government, Lebanon, right? And then uh, so they, they began consultations and they're doing it. So Then Muslim, Jewish, and Western leaders attack free speech and dissent through the U.N. This is from the Excavator uh, blog. So check it out. What is political Islam? It is a prison for the soul and mind financed and publicized by the CIA, MI6, and other Western intel agencies. What is Zionism? It is a totalitarian, terroristic, and racist political movement that will be responsible for a holocaust of Palestinians and Muslims in this century. What is America? It is a slave and a tyrant at the same time, a deluded empire. What is Iran? It is a nation that only exists to fight, conquer, and be conquered. What is Saudi Arabia? It is a stupid and servile country that is literally run by apes who belong to an era before the rise of civilization. That's not me saying that, okay? This is the author. What is Israel? It is the most cruel, heartless, evil, and racist nation that exists in the world today. What is the EU, the European Union? It is a banksters paradise, and that is true. Uh, you know, Greece, <laughs> they're, they're talking about how they're going to, how they avoided bankruptcy before and how they have to just they have to sell off their islands and and have more austerity cuts to save the to keep them in the euro and and to keep them going and it's just like god it is a bankster's paradise kind of like what we had in 08 09 um here in the united states what is the united nations it's a forum where leaders of totalitarian and democratic nations pretend to listen to each other what is exactly it's exactly what it is what is al-qaeda here's the good part it is a mythical enemy. U.S. officials proclaim that al-Qaeda is in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Tunisia, Yemen, Syria. In other words, al-Qaeda magically appears wherever the empire sets its sights on. So, and um, you can actually check out um, a documentary on YouTube. You should be able to find it easily. Just put the, the myth of al-Qaeda, the invisible al-Qaeda or something like that. You'll find it. Good documentary talking about how when they try to track 
um, Al Qaeda around the world, you can't actually find an organization known as it. Um, so, it's it's the West. They create this opposition. It's a controlled opposition by the Western powers um, to create like instability, and then they fill the power. They fill the vacuum. They put in their they and, and promise them that they're going to get the Sharia law and all that stuff. And then they sweep in with these uh, business uh, uh, leaders, CEOs like Obama and Romney, uh, to represent industrial uh, industries, different industries, usually energy and that banking, to rape and pillage the country. They ask the question, what is freedom of speech? It's the greatest thing in society, and it's under attack by totalitarian leaders in both Western worlds and in the Islam Islamic world. Says last month, Muslim leaders and Western-owned Arab kings converged at the UN and attacked freedom of speech. I believe, I believe this was over the video released by the Zionist um, Innocence of Muslims. Qatar or Qatar is even calling for an international law against blasphemy, another word for dissent. It goes on, it says, individuals who reject religious dogma are deemed blasphemous by tyrants like the Emir of Qatar and the Ayatollahs of Iran. A different kind of tyranny exists in the West where the word blasphemy is replaced with conspiracy theory. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, just months after 9-11, you had Bush saying, never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories. President Obama reiterated Bush's anti-free speech statements in a speech in Cairo, Egypt in 2009. Constitutional law professor wrote an article for the Washington Post, Shut Up and Play Nice, How the Western World is Limiting Free Speech, saying that free speech is dying in the Western world, while most people still enjoy considerable freedom of expression, which is, of course, co-opted, right? You can only express certain things. If you want to express their social um, agenda, well, then they'll push it. This right, once a absolute, has been less defined and less dependable for those espousing controversial social, political, and religious views. The decline of free speech has come not from any single blow, but rather from thousands of paper cuts of well-intentioned ex exceptions designed to maintain social harmony. That's what I was talking about. You can't speak out uh, about anything. You can be a bully. Uh, you can be a racist and they've been using that a lot lately as well. The fact that Western, Jewish, and Muslim leaders could come together and use international law to shut down free speech and destroy inter the internet is a terrifying prospect. Yeah, they're actually having an anti-terror law um, proposed by the UN for the internet. They are enemies of critical thought, individual liberties, and free societies. It says that Israel is in its own territory of tyranny when they attack free speech and silent dissent. The special phrase they use is not blasphemy, but anti-Semitism. What is Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda magically appears wherever the empire sets its sights on. Remember that. Panetta, Leon Panetta, the senior U.S. defense leader, said what? We cannot let Al-Qaeda hide in North Africa. So, like I said, I've mentioned, I've actually said that before. They have their sights set on um, Africa, West Africa and that, uh, because they want their resources. So, all of a sudden, Al-Qaeda will appear there. They're working on their, with their allies on a plan to deal with Al-Qaeda-linked militants in Mali and elsewhere in North Africa region with American assistance, like you center on, ooh, intelligence, mm, and logistical support and not troops on the ground. So this must be the new trend, right? Like, um, oh, they have links to 9-11, right? They can just say that. Officials link Al-Qaeda and the Islamic Maghreb to the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. So everything is going to be tied to the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. So just look for that. The African Union reinstates. I mean, dude, they could even use that for, like, attacking China or something. I mean, then that's not going to happen. But uh, for some standoff uh, in China, well, we better go over there because there's militants, insurgents, and al-Qaeda linked to the U.S. Embassy in China. So Africa Union reinstates Mali ahead of invasion. Officials term Western-backed invasion inevitable. So the AU has announced that it has ended suspension of Mali's membership in their organization, restoring their full membership just weeks ahead of the presentation of a plan to invade the country. I've actually come across a few articles back when this happened, uh, this original coup, that it was a CIA-run uh, coup, but then all of a sudden uh, this new sect came in there. It says here, the Islamic group called Ansar Dime, which is hoping to impose a theocratic system, i.e., uh, political Islam, which we were just talking about. AU mauling deployment of, see, that's the thing. They got, see, they created the, the, the instability in Libya and all around there and stuff like that, north and with the Arab Spring. Um, and then they get their little CIA puppet regime in there. And then the, the, the extremists that they use ended up coming in and overrunning. So now they got to undo that just like in Libya, except they're going to let Libya just, uh, they're going to leave that on ice for now. 
Then next up, we have AU mauling deployment of 3,200 troops to northern Mali. So that's the, basically the number. Uh, Sudan, Iran links under scrutiny after arms factory blast. So d here we go. Remember the Israeli strike in Sudan. Diplomatic sources tell AFP uh, bombed factory in the Khartoum manufactured drones and that Iran and Sudan agreed to produce unconventional arms. So did Israel try to sabotage a joint Iranian-Sudanese effort to manufacture military drones? I don't think so. Just like linking it to Benghazi, they're going to link everything to Iran. So that's how it happens with cyber attacks. Whatever, right? Uh, they're going to blame on Iran and, 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 and Al-Qaeda and stuff like that. So, But uh, the reality is, is Sudan is actually one of those countries on the list of dominoes to go down along with, uh, you know, Libya, Lebanon, Iran, Afghanistan, Iraq. So whatever they got to do, right? Whatever uh, lame excuse they have to come up with. EU hypocrisy. Anti-Tehran channel launches in London amid ban on Iranian state television. A new Iranian t television station has started broadcasting from London aiming to be a platform for opposition to Iran's current leadership. The launch comes just over a week after 19 state-run Iranian TV and radio stations were banned in the EU. So, there you go. I'll post a link to this article. It kind of ties in with it from about a week ago from Land Destroyer. EU censors alternative news and bid to dominate narrative. Western media quietly attempts to censor growing global opposition, beginning with Iranian media, i.e. press TV. Then the Malala attacks fuels Pakistani conspiracy theories. So, again, this is coming from the new voice for Pakistan, Daily Times. I I almost wonder if it's just like a front <clears throat> for Western intelligence, kind of like uh, Russia's Novosti and stuff like that. But uh, they're going to go in here and they're going to say that the Pakistanis are full of conspiracy theories. Remember, conspiracy theory is what? Blasphemy. It's dissent. And the Pakistani people are, uh, are, they know what's going on, right? They're not stupid. They're smart. They say, so this is going to make fun out of them right here with this first paragraph by saying, it's a well-known fact in Pakistan that Osama bin Laden died in 2006, that the U.S. commander raid in his compound in May 2011 was merely a drama orchestrated by U.S. President Barack Obama to help win the re-election, according to report. Then they say this, of course, if that were true, Obama might have waited until after the first presidential debate of the campaign season to fake the al-Qaeda leaders a killing. See that? No, why? Why? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, he got a lot of support from the neocons, the defense industry and stuff like that, defense complex, because he supposedly took out bin Laden. Because he's tough on terror, right? He's increased the drone strikes, killing more Pakistanis and Afghans. According to the report, some national newspapers and TV cable outlets routinely report the U.S. is behind terrorist attacks. Oh, <laughs> that's not true. Supports the war. The Pakistani Taliban are waging against Pakistan's government and military. Well, we know that they created the Taliban, right, well, along with the Pakistani government. We know Pakistan's government is a puppet government for the West. You know, otherwise they wouldn't allow them to have nuclear weapons. The U.S. Embassy in Islamabad has to regularly churn out corrections, see, for the record, corrections for the record that take Pakistani media to take to task for carrying outrageous claims, conspiracy theories, right? Actually, that's what the White House does <laughs> before they can submit stuff uh, in the White House uh, press and stuff like that. They have to submit it to them so that they can censor it and make sure that the facts are accurate. So they say the latest conspiracy theory to gain traction is the notion that the U.S. was behind the Taliban attack this month on uh, Malala, the woman, or the girl, I'm sorry, the student from SWAT who criticized the extremist group for denying girls access to brainwashing and re-education camps. Uh, the purported purpose of the ruse to make the Taliban look really, really bad and thus generate public sympathy for drone strikes and whip up support for Pakistani army invasion of North Waziristan to route the Haqqani network base there. So, wow, that's a lot to digest. But if you know how things really work, um, then that would make pretty good sense. So they say that the right-wing parties in Pakistan are in great crisis because the Taliban, quote, supposedly have crossed a boundary. They've become a symbol of right wing is losing support. Finishing up, we have court told UK spies assisting CIA to murder Pakistanis. In London, the High Court has been told that the UK intelligence officials could be encouraging or assisting murder and the commission of war crimes by providing assistance for then CIA drone strikes in Pakistan's tribal areas, which has resulted in the deaths of hundreds of civilians and had little impact on targeting militants. So when we return, we'll talk about Afghanistan, Israel, and the elections.
This is Gigi and I'm Darko. Thank you.